because it's mermaid. I apologize for not having a video for you guys last week. I was feeling a little under the weather. Uh, nothing to worry about, just a little rundown, a little tired. Uh, just didn't have the energy to give to you guys and I didn't feel like that was right so I figured I would take the week off to kind of uh, regroup as it were and come back today and give you guys a video. Today's video is very different from pretty much any other video I've ever done for you guys. Um, also just like a little disclaimer, I am a girl and I do like makeup. Um, in high school I used to wear makeup pretty much every day. Cute, cute pictures of cute high school me. Uh, but so anyways, I uh, pretty much regularly wore makeup in high school. I kind of felt like it was required. Uh, which is silly, but whatever. It made me happy. It was kind of like art for me. Um, however, I am by no means a professional in the art of makeup, um, and I'm definitely not a beauty blogger. And I actually did some research before I did this video today uh, to try and give you guys the best video I could. Um, so I did watch a few beauty bloggers. It's not something I normally do. I mean, I'll watch tutorials on Instagram sometimes, but I don't like watch beauty bloggers on YouTube. That's just not really what I do. Um, it's not something that, uh, although I am interested in, it's not something that I tend to watch. Uh, but I did watch several because I wasn't really sure what would be expected of me in doing this type of a video. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that just like anything else, beauty blogging is actually very varied. You know, some people do the fancy swatches on their arm with the perfect rectangles that I have no idea how they do. Um, and some people just, you know, talk about the whatever they bought and maybe do their makeup and yeah. So I was really, really happy to see that like, it doesn't really matter how I put this video together because it's kind of like a preference thing. So that's all a preface to uh, the reason I'm doing a makeup video at all is uh, yesterday I took my very first shopping trip to Sephora. Now I have been in a Sephora before. Um, I've stepped into them when they're in JCPenney's. Um, I did check out the one in Millbury Plaza in Mass. Um, but normally my experience with Sephora is kind of like wistfully walking amongst the shelves and being like, I wish I could afford to shop here. Which in reality, I always could, but it was just like, don't wanna spend that much on makeup when I can go to Walgreens and get similar shades for much cheaper. Um, and it was just kind of something that I wasn't wanting to spend the money on. Uh, not that I really couldn't, just that I always kind of felt like I should not. Um, and so I spent pretty much any time that I spent in Sephora was dodging employees and quickly running out before I could, you know, have to, that awkward of, oh, I'm just looking because I can't actually afford to buy anything, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was pretty much my past Sephora experience. And like the one, the one time I went to the one in Millbury, I want to say it was like Black Friday. So like they were swamped. So it was really easy to avoid the employees because they were all busy. Um, but basically that was my, don't do that. That was my Sephora experience. By the way, I did not just hit him. I tapped him. So before anybody freaks out, I, I don't smack my cats. Um, anyway, so, uh, I had never actually purchased anything from Sephora before. So yesterday we went to Mohegan Sun uh, Casino, which I had never been to before, and I mostly went for Krispy Kreme, let's be honest, because donuts are life. Um, Krispy Kreme donuts are life, anyway. Uh, I grew up in Florida, where pretty much Krispy Kreme was your option for donuts, um, and Dunkin' Donuts just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. And as a now native New Englander, I am sure that is blasphemy, but I miss my Krispy Kreme. So I was very excited to go to the casino and get Krispy Kreme. Um, but they did have a Sephora in the, in the casino. Yeah. I'm on one of those weird weeks where I don't have any bills due. So the money that I have is, you know, mine. Uh, so I decided that I would spoil myself. Um, pretty much since the original Naked palette came out, I've been wanting one of the Naked palettes. Uh, it's Urban Decay eyeshadow for those of you who don't know. Um, and really good quality, really pretty. Um, 
I've always really liked the colors that they offer. So I'd always wanted one. Obviously, I think the first two have been discontinued. So they have Naked, Naked 2, and Naked 3, which I did see one of the Naked 3 palettes there. Um, I also know that the ones in the casinos are usually like outlet stores, so I don't know if that affects what they have, like if they get like leftovers or how that works. So I went in specifically for a Naked palette, um, but then while I was there, I was thinking about, uh, I worked at Yukon Bookstore for a little while and there was a makeup section in the bookstore and we had a Clinique section and there was a moisturizer that I was able to take a free sample of home and I really, really liked it, but I didn't want to spend the money on the full size product. Now that I no longer work at the bookstore, kind of which I had splurged back then, um, I've been using this Neutrogena Hydro Boost and I do like it. Um, however, it's, uh, it's Hydro Boost Gel Cream. I just find it a little heavy is the best way that I can describe it. Um, and I did notice after I started using this that I was having some more acne issues than I had had in the past. Um, my skin is pretty clear right now. I haven't been using this for days now. And, you know, I really like Neutrogena products. I use the makeup removing wipes. Um, I think that they're generally really good, but I just haven't had luck with this specific moisturizing cream. And I do tend to get very dry skin around my nose. Um, I do have allergies, so I do blow my nose a lot. Um, and it's just, I would like something that would, you know, take away the scaly feeling. And I just haven't had any luck finding anything that I liked as much as the Clinique. Um, so I decided while I was there, I was going to buy myself that too, even though that was another splurge. Um, so those are the two things that I went in for. And um, as I mentioned, I've like poked into Sephora's before, but I've never actually been shopping at one. And I was a little apprehensive. Um, it is a higher end store. Um, it's not a place that I'm used to shopping at. And I wasn't sure what to expect in terms of, you know, how the employees were going to kind of act. Um, you know, we are obviously in a quarantine, so I didn't know how that would affect my experience. Well, I guess we're not technically in quarantine anymore because we're in like stage one open or whatever. I don't really know how any of that works, but point being, we are still dealing with the COVID pandemic and I wasn't sure how that would affect my experience. Um, however, I had a fantastic experience. Um, and with it being at a casino and, you know, they probably are used to more high-end clientele, I'm guessing. Uh, I don't really know what the clientele of a casino generally is like. Um, but so I was a little worried though, you know, they might be a little snooty. Obviously I'm expecting them to know a lot more about makeup than I do. So I don't know how they're going to treat me as someone who like doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, and I had a lot of apprehensive apprehension about it, but it was fantastic. So just to kind of set the scene for you, uh, my husband, Brian and I, you know, walked down to Sephora and they have a person standing outside to go over the safety measures with you. And um, we passed Sephora a couple of times before we actually went to it. And pretty much every time we passed, there was someone different standing outside. So it seemed like they were rotating that shift, which I thought was really nice. Um, in addition, there were a lot more employees working than I expected to see, given that we are still in the middle of this pandemic. Um, I wanna say three, four, five, six, I want to say there were at least seven people in like working and we're not talking about a huge store. I mean, if you think about your standard Claire's in the mall, it was probably about that size. So I mean, a decent size store, but not like, I would say maybe not even the size of your standard JCPenney Sephora, which normally has a pretty large area in the middle of the store. It was not, I wouldn't say it was even that big. So you had seven employees in there, which I was surprised about with the pandemic and also just in general, like why do you need that many people? Um, but it actually really contributed to the, um, the overall kind of experience that I had. Um, so we, you know, were greeted by the person at the door who, you know, was like, hey, have you been in here since we reopened? Do you mind if I just go over our safety measures with you? Which was obviously totally fine. Um, you know, and it was basic stuff, you know, keep your mask on the whole time you're in the store. Fine. Um, they had hand sanitizer for us to use before we went into the store and periodically throughout the store in case we were touching things, we could then sanitize our hands again. 
Um, and then a big thing about Sephora, which I've always been really leery of this, so I've never really used them anyway, but the testers, um, normally as a customer, you can go in and try the testers yourself, swatch it on your hand, you know, whatever you're gonna do. Um, however, because of the pandemic and everything, um, if you wanted to try a product that was available as a tester, you had to get one of the employees, they would sanitize it for you, swatch it for you, and then, you know, go on your day. Um, which all seemed totally logical to me. Um, you know, I really appreciated that they were doing everything they could to protect, you know, themselves, their um, customers. I don't know why I totally blanked on that. I've only worked retail forever. Um, but so it was, it was all really logical stuff. And I really appreciated that they took the time to like, they had a little sign, they went over it with you, everything was good to go. Um, so he offered me a basket and I told him, you know, I know exactly what I'm going for, so I shouldn't need that, but thank you. Um, when I walked into the store, I was immediately greeted by another employee. She was actually standing on the opposite side to, um, show you which way, uh, just to make sure people were following the floor signs basically, because they had stickers telling you which way to go. Um, pretty much every aisle was one way and also the main aisle they had marked which way you could go um so basically they set it up really smart too so the way it was set up was so if you wanted to go through the whole store you would have no interruptions being able to navigate the entire store following these uh floor markers however if you wanted to bypass certain things um you just had to make sure you were on the right side of the main aisle you could go past what you didn't want to look at and then go to where you were going so I thought that it was all very well marked, you know, big stickers on the floor too. Like I've spent to a couple grocery stores where they literally have like tape arrows. And like, that's fine, but it's easy to miss sometimes, especially if you're like, all right, what am I trying to remember to get? And you're not necessarily thinking about looking at the floor to figure out where you're going. Um, I try to be really mindful of that, but I'm guilty of missing them. So I thought it was very well labeled. Um, and in addition to that, just the store itself was really easy to navigate. Um, the, the brands were labeled on the top of like the, I don't really, really want to call them because like in a, if you think about a grocery store, like the aisles are like really tall and these were more like, um, like they weren't even as tall as I am in most places. Um, so they're more like, um, I know there's a word for this because we have them at GameStop and I cannot think of the word for what these setups are called, but essentially it's two sides and two end caps and they're probably eye level with me, I would say, it would be about how high they were, which is kind of nice too because you could see the next aisle and figure out what you wanted. Um, but the brands of makeup were clearly labeled on the top of each section and then obviously the makeup is laid out so you can see it. Um, so. As I said, I was going for a naked palette and Urban Decay was like the third, second or third aisle in. So I had to go down an aisle I didn't care about to get to it to go the correct way down the aisle, but whatever. Um, so I went, you know, around and was able to get to the Urban Decay section. And um, as we got there, another employee came by, asked if I wanted to see anything swatched and I told him, you know, thank you, but no. I know I'm getting a naked palette. I just have to decide which one. So they had naked heat, naked three, naked cherry. They had a couple of mini palettes too, which after watching some YouTube videos as I did research for this video, I think those might have been highlighter palettes and I didn't realize it. I probably would have bought a highlighter palette in addition to what I was buying if I had realized that that's what those were because let's be honest i am a highlighter hoarder i don't know why i love highlighter so much but it's like my favorite thing ever i didn't have it in high school which is a super bummer because i feel like i would have just had a field day with it and i probably would have had glitter over my entire face 90 percent of the time so maybe it's a good thing i didn't know what highlighter was then but point being i would have bought and i 100 percent would have ended up with a highlighter palette if i had realized that there were um, highlighter palettes associated with the naked line but what are you gonna do so the main reason I have never purchased a naked palette before despite wanting them is they usually run about $54 somewhere in that range 
Um, the ones that they had at this Sephora ranged from 44 to 54. Um, so they had, you know, a good $10 price range. Um, there were two that I really liked. There was Naked Honey, which had some beautiful gold tones. And then there was Naked Cherry, which is very warm. Um, based on my research, I think it's been out about a year. Uh, again, I'm not a makeup expert. I don't really follow it very well. I don't read a lot of fashion magazines, so I don't see the ads for them. You know, it's, it's not something that I see regularly. Um, so I didn't realize that this was an older palette, just looking at it on the shelf. <clears throat> now, the two palettes I was looking at, I believe were both $49. So that's much more money than I generally would spend. I want to say the most expensive palette that I have in my bathroom right now was 30 and I felt so guilty buying it. I believe it's a CoverGirl palette. It was one of the first ones they released that was cruelty free, which by the way, don't, I have no idea if Urban Decay is cruelty free. I usually try to look into that because it is important to me that things are cruelty free, but I didn't look. But lucky for us, I still have the box, so I'm gonna look right now. So I ended up going with the Naked Cherry. And the reason is there are several colors in here that I just, adored. Let's see, are you cruelty free? I do not see my little bunny friends, so I don't believe this is. Um, again, I generally like to look for cruelty free options. Um, it just makes me feel like I'm doing a little bit to help with things that I just don't feel like are right. Um, I can understand that like you don't want to test on humans right away because if something goes wrong then there's all kinds of like problems. But to me there should be the same problems if you're hurting animals for the sake of testing. Like you should be fairly certain it's not going to be harmful before you're testing it. And like testing makeup on rabbits doesn't make sense to me because they, they have skin obviously but you never see like a shaved rabbit. It's always like those white lab rabbits. And it's like, they have fur. Like that's, you're not gonna be putting makeup on fur. Like I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I also had a friend in college who did their entire senior capstone project on animal cruelty um, in labs in general, but also, you know, makeup. So I generally do try to look for cruelty free options. Um, this unfortunately is just like a selfish thing. Like I've been wanting this since the first one came out, which was a long time ago. And um, I do hope that in the future, if they don't already have a line of cruelty free products, I hope that Urban Decay will move to that. Um, and I don't want to slander anybody, you know? I don't think that it's up to me to say, well, that's really effed up that you don't have cruelty free products. Um, and again, just because I'm not finding the rabbit on here, I suppose it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not cruelty free, but I'm assuming that if you are cruelty free, you're going to advertise that you are because it's a big deal. So unfortunately, I don't believe this is cruelty free. Am I going to not use it now? Absolutely not. I spent $50 on this. Um, so anyway, getting back to what I was talking about before I got a little sidetracked, um, $50 is the most I've literally ever spent on makeup. But also, most of the makeup that I own is old. I'm talking like from high school. I know for a fact I have a Claire's palette that's from high school. I also know for a fact that I have a Sephora pal uh, palette that was a gift from my grandmother who went shopping at Sephora to get me nice makeup when I went to college. That's still six years old now. You know, right on here, it says that this is good for 24 months after it's open. Now, eyeshadow, I generally haven't had issues with getting infections in my eyes or anything like that using after the fact, obviously, because I'm still using makeup from high school. Now, I don't wear makeup nearly as often now, so sometimes it does irritate my eyes. And I can't say that that's not because it's old, because it very well could be. So I've been weeding through my makeup. Sometimes it's hard because some of it I use a lot like when I do wear makeup, I tend to use that. So it's hard for me to want to throw it away, even though it's old, because I do still want to use it. However, 
Um, I'm getting a little bit more um, involved in taking care of myself, I should say, um, is how I'll word it. I just feel like self-care is becoming much more important to me. Um, I want to, you know, make sure that I'm healthy, make sure I'm taking care of myself, make sure I'm not unnecessarily exposing myself to harm. Um, so part of that is getting rid of this old makeup that could potentially, you know, give me eye infections or cause other skin issues because it's old. Um, and I also made the decision that, you know, I want to have less makeup. Like right now I kind of look like a hoarder. I have a huge, like probably this high of a stack of intricately tetris together different sized palettes of eyeshadow. And I don't wear makeup a lot. Like when I do wear makeup, I thoroughly still enjoy putting it on. I still find it to be a very art oriented kind of a thing. I like the way that I look in makeup, but I just don't wear it a lot. And I just kind of made the decision that if I was going to be getting rid of makeup that's old and I was going to be trying to take better care of myself and I was going to be more focused on what I'm using, then I wanted to say that it was okay for me to spend a little bit more money, get a higher quality palette, and have just less makeup. Basically I'll be buying it less often so that when I do buy it it's, you know, like a splurge of something I really want and I know that I will use it because I've spent more money on it, I really wanted it. And this is something that I thought about for a long time, not this specific palette, but wanting a Urban Decay Naked palette was something that I have thought about literally since the first one came out. So I felt like that justified this for me and that was kind of how I talked myself into going ahead, going to the store and buying myself an expensive product. So as I said, I got the Naked Cherry. Um, another blogger pointed out when she was uh, testing out this palette and it's something that I also am kind of bummed about. Um, None of these colors have cherry in the name. There's a dark color called Privacy that she just decided to call uh, Black Cherry and I think that that was really, really accurate. Now you'll notice the box does look a little dinged up and this is because uh, right after I bought it, I did open it because I wanted to see it. Um, sometimes you just don't get an idea of what a palette really looks like from the tester on the shelf because you know, you've got, maybe you have broken, um, broken pans of the makeup, you know, people have smudged it, people are using it. So you don't always get a true sense of what it looks like. So I wanted to actually see what it really, really looked like. Um, but I just wanted to point out because I noticed this yesterday when I opened it and was really excited about it. They even pay attention to the inside of the packaging. Like Norma, I'm used to the inside of a makeup palette box being white, but they literally put cherries all on the inside of their box. And I think that that's, um, kind of one of those signs of like a higher end product is that they tend to take their marketing very seriously and think about the entire package as opposed to just like what the customer is going to see right away. So this is the front of the palette and I really like how it's like this double layer. You've got the clear glass and then there's a space before the actual printed um, cherries. So naked urban decay cherry, oh sorry. Naked Urban Decay is raised up on this plastic cover. Cherry and the actual pictures of the cherry are also raised up, but they're inside this plastic lid. So I can't like feel the texture, but I can see the texture. And I thought that that was really nice. Another thing I really appreciated about this palette is that it's not, so all of the palettes that I have, you have to kind of use your fingernails and kind of like pop the palette open. This is magnetized. So I don't actually have to like force it open or closed. It just magnetizes shut and I can literally hold it from the lid and it doesn't open because it's magnetized. So I think that that's really, really smart. Um, and something that I really appreciate because I bite my fingernails still, I'm working on it um, as part of my self care thing, but I still do it. And I really like that this is so easy to open, but then not easy enough that like, it's just gonna be open and like get ruined. Um, so I really appreciated that magnetic lid. And then this is the palette. Let me make sure I don't drop the, pen, the brush out of here. Ooh, videoception. All right, let me, sorry. 
So these are the colors. I think there's a nice range of light to dark. Um, there are one, two, three, four, there are five like glittery colors and then the rest of them are very matte, um, which I like because I have a tendency to want to use all the really glittery stuff together, but I know that like it tends to look nicer if you have like your matte and then you use the glitter to like pop. So I like that this kind of forces me to think about the matte shades because there are more of them than there are the glitter shades. Um, and I'm also not a makeup brush expert. I have some, but I honestly like, I'm positive I don't use them all correctly. Um, so I have another palette that came with a brush similar to this. It's double-ended. It's got the nice fluffy end. And then like, this is also a fluffy end. The other one I have, um, I believe is called a pencil tip. Could be wrong, not really sure, but it's a different shape and not quite as fluffy as this. Um, but uh, I like that it comes with the brush, obviously. I find, in the past I have found that like, if I wanna use multiple, like I don't ever have enough brushes for the colors that are in the palette, which I mean, I know if they gave you like a single brush for every single color, that would be ridiculous. This package would be giant, like nobody does that. Um, but I just find that like, it's kind of frustrating. But I also am like a terrible makeup person. I know that you're supposed to wash your brushes and that's another thing that I need to start doing for self-care to make sure that I'm not, you know, giving myself eye infections. Um, I need to wash my brushes. So like most people are probably washing their brushes every time they use their makeup so they don't have to worry about mixing colors or like not having like a brush for a specific color because they probably washed it and it's clean and it doesn't have any other colors on it and it's fine. Um, so that's something that I want to work on. Um, but yeah, so this is the palette I decided on. It was $49. Um, I'm really happy with it and excited to try it out. I don't really go to many places right now because of the pandemic, but it'll be fun to just do my makeup for me at some point. So, Brandon and I picked up the palette. I started to make my way to the cash wrap and then thought about, as I mentioned earlier, my moisturizer issue. And so I was like, you know, babe, there's one other thing I want to grab while we're here. And I started to look around because I knew it was Clinique, but I didn't see Clinique on the wall anywhere or on any of the little stanchion, that's not the right word, whatever the aisle things are called. I'm going to think of it after this video and it's going to drive me bananas. But anyway, so I started to look for Clinique and there were these two additional workers who were standing kind of onto the left and again we were greeted and they asked if there was anything they could help me find and I said you know I'm actually looking for Clinique and she was like oh right this way and she starts to go and then she goes wait makeup or skincare and I was like skincare please so she goes the other way and the reason I couldn't see it was um which I didn't even realize because of the shape of the store the cash wrap is here and there's actually a corner that goes back and there's like a little niche over here before the the left side wall and Clinique was tucked into the corner. So she asked me the name of the product I was looking for. Your girl didn't know. And I was like, you know, I'm really sorry. I took home a free test of a product when I worked somewhere that sold Clinique. I know that it's pink and I know that it's a moisturizer. And she was like, oh, and she rambles off the name. And I was like, yep, that's the one. Now, the store that I worked at had like this weird squirt bottle and the tester always got jammed and I was a little bit worried about that. However, what I didn't know was that the product also comes in a jar. This I have not opened yet. So she picks up the jar. So this is Clinique Moisture Surge 72 Hour Auto Replenishing Hydrator. And it comes in a jar. So this is more like a gel, like the Neutrogena that I'm used to. Oh, that's fancy. So when you open the lid, there's a little Clinique cap on it to keep it nice. Cool. So yeah, so it's more of the consistency of the Neutrogena that I've been using. Whereas what I was using in the sample, um, I don't know how to explain it. It was almost jelly-like. Um, it was a little thicker and it had bubbles throughout it. Whereas this clearly is a cream. Um, so I'm not sure if this is the exact same product, but it's the exact same line. It's the Moisture Surge. I know that that's correct. 
um, as soon as she said, it's one of those things where like, as soon as you hear it, you're like, that's the one. Um, I really like the way this smells. I wish that you could share smells in a video. Like it just smells fresh and clean. I wish I could like put my finger on what that fragrance is. Allergy tested, 100% fragrance free. So apparently it's not fragrance, it's just the smell of the cream. All right, use whenever needed under or over makeup. How do you put this on over makeup? I'm confused. Again, not a makeup expert, not a skincare expert. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited about this too. This was another $50, which is a lot. But again, I'm spending 30 on the Neutrogena and I'm not happy with it. So it was another decision of I'm worth it. I deserve to feel healthy. I deserve to feel like my face is fresh and moisturized and clean. Um, so I decided that it was okay for me to spend the $50 on this. I could have got the smaller jar, but it's like, I know that I'm going to use it a lot. So why am I going to get the smaller jar that I'm going to go through faster and need to buy again sooner when I can just get the $50 one and have it for a while. <clears throat> so I got my palette, I got my moisturizer, and I was like, all right, that's it. Because I know that this is a $100 bill. It's time to go. So the worker who had brought me over to the clinic section walked us over, showed us how to get to the cash wrap, which that was the only part that was a little confusing because of where you were in the corner, you had to like go around a couple of things and then come back to the cash wrap, even though you were like right next to it. But again, we're in a pandemic. Everybody's trying to be safe. I totally understand. So I get to the cash wrap. Um, the lady behind the register was very, very nice. Um, and she asked me if I was, you know, a rewards member. And I told her I wasn't. And I was like, you know, is it something that's free to sign up for? You know, what are the details? So she's explaining to me, you know, it is free. Um, you get a birthday present at, during your birthday, which is nice. Um, and I decided that I would go ahead and sign up for it because as I mentioned, I'm trying to think more about like what I'm using and if I'm going to buy less makeup and kind of splurge, maybe Sephora will be my go-to. You know, it's a trusted name. I know the kinds of things that they carry. I know that they have what I want. It makes sense to me. So I just, you know, went ahead and signed up and I did not realize, but they were closed during my birthday because of the pandemic. So I automatically got a birthday gift, even though my birthday was back in March. Um, she did have to call someone else over to override it because it's not March. Um, but the woman who overrid it was also very nice, you know, said hello to me, fixed it and then went back to what she was doing as opposed to just, you know, fixing it and walking away and never acknowledging that there was a customer there. So I really liked that. Um, and I had several options, but I ended up deciding on a, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this because I'm not a beauty expert, but it's Briogeo, I think. Um, and this is a hair duo. So it's a scalp revival, charcoal and coconut oil, micro exfoliating shampoo. Excuse me, sorry about that. And then a don't despair repair deep conditioning mask. Now I chose this because my hair has been a little unruly lately. I don't know if it's a change in the weather because it went from pretty chilly to very hot very quickly. Um, but my hair has been very frizzy. Um, even when I wash and condition it, I'm not noticing the same softness that I normally get. Um, so I wanted to try something to kind of give it a little bit of help. Um, and what I really like about this, cause the mask I was a little concerned about cause I've never used a hair mask before, but I was excited to try it. But basically you use it just like conditioner. You use it after the shampoo, you leave it in for 10 minutes and then you rinse it out. So essentially I can still do it right in the shower, use it in place of my conditioner and you know, leave it in while I wash my face and my body and just make sure that it's a full 10 minutes and then rinse it. So I'm hoping that this will be really nice for my hair. Um, again, I just like miss having like a nice soft touch to my hair, which I haven't had. Um, my hair is very coarse and textured anyway. So like, it's not easy to maintain softness in my hair. Um, I also, as many of you know, if you've been here for a while, I dye my hair a lot. I haven't done it in a while. Um, you know, when I found out I was pregnant in December, I uh, did a lot of research and a lot of things, which 
turns out isn't necessarily true, but a lot of um, dye companies were saying things like, you know, check with your doctor before you dye your hair if you're pregnant. Um, so I dyed my hair back brown, then unfortunately I did miscarry. Um, but I just, oh geez, that lid was very loose. Um, but I just haven't had the energy to bleach and re-dye my hair a different color. So for now it's brown and it is what it is. Um, but so I'm sure that all of that dyeing didn't help with my hair, you know, it probably needs a break anyway. Um, so I just wanted to give it a little helping hand, you know, self care, take care of myself. So these are the two little tiny containers for these. Um, I'm really curious if this shampoo, because it's a charcoal thing, I'm wondering if it's black. Oh, it's gray. So that's the shampoo. Smells minty. I wasn't expecting that. What is that? Charcoal and what? Charcoal and coconut oil. Hmm. I'm surprised it smells minty. It smells really nice. Um, I have no idea if this is gonna like dye my fingers. I've never used like a charcoal mask before. Um, so this will be a new experience. I've also never used that charcoal toothpaste because it kind of weirds me out. And then the mask. I really like that they have these easy pull tabs on these too. As I say easy and can't pull it. My hands are a little sweaty, it's hot. Oh, there we go. And this is the mask. So this is more of like a white color. That smells more like just straight conditioner. It doesn't really smell like anything. Um, but yeah, so I'm not gonna do my makeup today. Um, I, I'm due for a shower. I don't really feel like doing my makeup. I know that I need a shower, so like, I don't want to do my makeup and then immediately get in the shower and wash it off. That feels like a waste, especially since I spent $50 on this. Um, however, if you guys are interested in seeing me do a makeup video, I would like to do those. Um, I haven't done them in the past just because I'm not an expert on that. I don't consider myself a beauty blogger. Um, I think that it's much better for people who know what they're doing to do that. Um, for me, I usually just kind of like wing it. Like I don't go into doing my makeup having any idea what I'm going to look like when I'm done. And sometimes that doesn't come out so great. Um, but I, I find makeup to be much more of an experimentation for me. Um, as I said, it's kind of like an additional form of art for me. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I go about that, I would love to do one of those videos. I'm just not going to do it today. Um, because I'm probably going to stop this video and go hop in the shower. So it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me to do that. Um, but I, again, I would love to do that if that's something you guys would be interested in. So please let me know in the comments if you would like to see me do a makeup, not necessarily a tutorial video because I, I don't feel comfortable labeling it a tutorial when I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it. But if you want to see like the process of how I do my makeup when I do it, um, I would be willing to upload a process video if you guys wanted to see that. Um, but yeah, so that was my first experience at Sephora. One thing that I did forget to add, um, when they gave me my bag, they spritzed it with perfume, which I can't really smell anymore because it's been in the house for a day. But, um, I thought that was crazy. Like, it's like such a high-end touch, I feel like. Like, I've never had that happen before. And I thought that that was neat. So, but yeah, so, uh, barring that additional comment, my first trip to Sephora, I thought was very welcoming, very fun. Um, obviously I was kind of going through quickly because we were at the casino, we were doing other things and I knew exactly what I wanted. Um, but it was just kind of like a really fun experience. I was nervous about it and it ended up being great, you know, on the way out. I don't want to say we were greeted again because on the way out, you're not really greeted. You're like goodbye but literally every employee spoke to us which is huge for me um I've worked a lot of places where that's expected but that's not usually what happens so it was kind of really nice I mean we were also I think the only um customers in the store at the time but still like you don't have to greet me every time but they did um and then on our way out, the girl who was on door duty was the girl who had helped me find the Clinique. So that was nice too. I got to say goodbye to her and thank her again. Um, and it was just a overall like just really good experience. And I was really happy, like pleasantly surprised. 
um, because as someone who's not super knowledgeable and who obviously wasn't 100% positive what I was looking for and just had like an idea, um, it was really nice not to be treated like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, if you don't know what you want, how can I help you? It was very much like, well, what can you tell me about the product? Well, I know it's pink and it's a moisturizer. I bet this is what you want. Yes, actually, that's exactly it. So that was great. Um, so kudos to Sephora. Um, I guess I shouldn't have expected anything different, but I think as someone who generally doesn't shop in high-end shops, I'm always a little intimidated and like nervous that maybe I'll be treated like I don't belong there. Um, but I, I felt very welcome. I felt very um, comfortable there. So um, I was very happy with that. Um, obviously I got products that I wanted and even some that I didn't know that I wanted, but I'm excited to try. Um, and yeah, so I, I would definitely recommend Sephora if it's something that's within your price point. Um, and I understand if it's not because as I said, it took me a long time to just kind of be like, you know what, it's okay for me to spend $50 on a palette because I'm going to use it and I deserve it. And, you know, uh, even the skincare, like I didn't really want to spend that much, but I just kind of got to a point where I was like, you know, what, it's okay for me to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this is completely different from literally anything I've ever done before, even in terms of like dyeing my hair. I don't really generally do like this kind of a review type of a video almost. Um, but I, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can also give me a thumbs down. Don't worry about hurting my feelings. I want to know what people think, if you like it or if you don't. If you don't, thumbs up or thumbs down. I might make more videos that you don't like and then you're going to unsubscribe and then I'm going to be like, why am I losing subscribers? And I won't know why. It'll be a bummer. If you're new here and you liked this video, um, please consider subscribing. I don't always do videos like this, but if it's something you would like to see, definitely comment below, you know, subscribe. I'll be sure to make more videos that people want to see. Um, and don't forget to ring the bell because if you don't ring the bell and, and you just subscribe, you're not necessarily going to see when I post new videos. I generally post new videos every Sunday. Sometimes I do miss it. Um, sometimes when I miss it, I'll post during the week just because I got a couple days behind. But generally, I try and post only on Sundays. Um, and if I do have bonus videos, sometimes I'll post those on Wednesdays or Thursdays. So keep an eye out for those too. Um, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye!